After waking up from my COVID coma and getting back to real life, I kind of realized that my music studio wasn't really a place I wanted to be. The colors didn't inspire me, I'd never added any personal touches, it just it wasn't feeling great. So today I am doing a 48 hour makeover of this room. All right, let's see what we have to work with. Yeah, definitely a lot of white and beige, definitely no personal touches, definitely in need of a glow up. Whoa. Okay, as many of you know, I am a performer, so I'm usually traveling all over the place, but right now during this pandemic, we're spending all of our time at home. And this small room serves a lot of different purposes. It's where I practice and learn music, it's where we file all of our paper, it's where I do my writing and editing, and it's where I do all of my recordings and self-tapes. So I'm super excited to transform this room into an inspiring creative space. But there's a catch. I don't want to spend any money, and I don't want it to drag on forever. So we're gonna see if we can do this makeover in 48 hours with a safety budget of $100 using mostly stuff I can find in our hole of a basement. As you see, our basement is a giant dump, so hopefully I'll be able to find some good stuff down here. Okay, let's take a look at the haul. I found all kinds of brushes and rollers, an impressive collection of leftover wall paint and spray paint from our various reno projects over the years. Oh, and did I mention the frames? It seems like we've never actually put up any photos, so instead we've just been accumulating empty frames. I also found a whole bunch of craft stuff and memorabilia to work with, and I'm thinking two full walls covered in mismatched frames would be really cool to design. But first we have to take everything out of this room, tape it, and paint it. Hi. I found this really cute sky blue color left over from the renovation of one of our rental properties, so I thought it might be a good idea to paint the doors this color. But first I have to do the really boring thing and tape it up because I'm a super messy painter and I don't want to make it uglier than it already is. <laughs> The minute I started brushing it on, I knew I'd made the right choice. This is gonna brighten up the room so nicely and be such a beautiful thing to look at while I'm singing. Luckily, the door came pre-primed, so after two coats, all I had to do was grab an X-Acto knife and cut away the plastic around the windows. I realized that the blue for the far wall had actually been left a bit open, so the paint had thickened and kind of dried, so I looked it up online and all I had to do was add a little bit of water to it, mix it up, and it was perfectly good to go. After two coats and a little bit of time to dry, I am already in love with this color. It makes the room look so much bigger. Now, originally I had planned to just leave this filing cabinet exactly the way it was, but I realized that after we painted the back wall and the doors, that this black color was gonna be super ugly if I left it. So I watched a couple of YouTube videos and I discovered that I actually wouldn't have to empty the entire thing, which would have taken me forever. I could just sand it, prime it, and paint it exactly the way it was. Oh, and I also discovered that when you sand a filing cabinet, you start inhaling little bits of likely toxic paint. And with masks kind of being hard to find right now, I tied a pair of leggings around my face and went to town. The whole filing cabinet actually didn't end up taking me that much time and I was super happy with the results. I think that the white looks so much better with the decor and I'm super happy to keep it in the room with me. Next, I hijacked the curtain rods from the living room, which we're planning on replacing anyway, and I marked where the brackets need to go on the new window with a Sharpie. Then I learned how to use a drill, and I drilled the brackets in so that we can hang curtains. I actually found these gray curtains in the basement as well. We originally bought them at Ikea a few years ago to use as a temporary room divider, but they're a little bit long for what I need in this room. Instead of choosing to sew the hem, which would have taken forever, I just decided to iron myself a crease, plug in the glue gun, and see what I could do. I was a little worried it was gonna look cheap when I finished, but from the front, I actually can't tell the difference and I'm super happy with the way that they turned out. Okay, now all I have to do is string the curtains and hang them up. 
Now, I use my studio a lot to make audition recordings and self-tapes, and I need some form of soundproofing so that it's not so echoey in here. But soundproof foam is super ugly, so I thought I'd hang a tapestry or a blanket of some sort. Luckily, I ordered this blanket off of Etsy a while back, and I found a spare piece of trim to hang it from. Like with all wooden things, it required a prime and a paint job. After it dried, I threaded a huge needle with yarn and tied knots all down the blanket to hold it in place. It took a while, but I'm super happy with how it looks. To mount it on the wall, I glue gunned a long piece of twine to the back and threaded another loop of twine under it. I did this a couple more times until I felt secure, and then I enlisted some help hanging it from two hooks we'd previously measured and screwed in. Ta-da! Elegant soundproofing. Okay, now onto my giant wall of frames. My old high school hoodie means a lot to me, but I never wear it anymore, and it ended up buried in a box for years. So I decided to cut it up and make something I could see every day. I started by cutting out all the text and laying it out the way I wanted. Then I lightly glue gunned everything to hold it together. I could have left it that way, but I wanted to make it a bit more polished looking, so I threaded a giant needle with white yarn and created a patchwork stitch effect around the borders of the small text. Finally, I glued the whole thing to the back of the frame and voila. As you can see, this glue gun quickly became my best friend and I decided to add a little finishing touch to this collage that my oldest stepdaughter made. So I grabbed some burlap ribbon left from our wedding vases and bouquets, which I made myself. Then I simply laid it out and glued it on, creating a nice finished border. Then I had to deal with the frames, some of which were kind of ugly. So I separated them from the backings, laid them out on a sheet, and turned ugly brown into gold with my buddy Tremclad. I gorilla glued some of the more fragile frames back together and decided to prime and paint them, but not before hanging them up to dry in the backyard. I feel like I'm in the Blair Witch Project. I'm generally not a fan of wood grain anything, but I love this clipboard frame, so that ugly brown just had to go. I decided to tie the room together using some of the leftover light blue wall paint for the frames. I also found this darker blue from one of our downstairs bathrooms, so I figured I'd use it too. Then I finally spent some money. In another effort to dull the echoey sound in here, I ordered a rug from Wayfair. It was only about 70 bucks, and I'll link it below. Boho chic, that's me all day long. One of the best decorating hacks I learned while I was living on a cruise ship was how to hang stuff on the wall without ruining it with a bunch of nails. Command strips and hooks are your best friends. I'll link them below as well. I started out using a level, but honestly, after I got going, I just eyeballed everything. For some of the heavier frames, I did end up having to screw in a few tiny hooks instead of just using the command strips, but they were still way easier to use than a hammer and nails. And hopefully they hold up, fingers crossed. And after spacing out and hanging about a thousand frames, we finally moved everything back in. All right guys, the room's done, my hair's all gone. Let's see how it turned out. Okay, let's start over here. This shelf used to be standing up in the corner behind the door and it just felt in the way all the time. So I decided to lay it out on its side and now I have a place to store away all of the ugly cords and boxes and other computer stuff in these cute little cubicles. And I also have a nice place to lay out all of my nice equipment for when I'm ready to use it. It's kind of like a museum of all my tax deductions. I used some of my leftover command hooks to hang up my lighting kit and my tripod on the wall. They used to just be sitting in a box in the corner and now they're up and out of the way and ready for when I wanna use them. Although the tripod's missing because I'm using it right now. And my second lighting stand. Now, I have a secret about this wall. I use this area for all of my online auditions and self tapes, but I can't have patchwork yellow in the background. What I did was cut up a photography backdrop in a reasonable dark blue and taped it up behind here. So whenever I need to use it, I can just flip up this blanket and I have a perfect dark blue background ready to go. I'm sure you've noticed by now that my desk is missing and in its place is this beautiful blue chair. After the room was done, I decided to move my desk upstairs because it was just feeling a bit too cluttered. I also totally caved on the budget and bought this chair off Wayfair, but it was on sale and it's so pretty. And I figured with all the money I saved on paint and decor, I deserved a treat. And now my masterpiece, the frame walls. I decided early on that I didn't want any photographs in this room, but I wanted to showcase some of our keepsakes and memorabilia. You'll notice there's still a little bit of free space at the top. I ran out of frames, but my goal is to have the entire wall covered at some point.
So that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching my 48 hour makeover and hopefully it gave you some ideas to transform some of the small spaces in your life. Before you leave, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ding the bell and check me out on Instagram as well. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.